Wow, astonishing and super lightweight. Yeah. And it's yeah. <laughs> it's common. So this is this is this is kind of cool because you admitted you know you admit that you starting out with this this whole thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And you're mostly interested in imaging, and this is kind of yeah. an easy way. I, from going from visual to this, I really think this is going to be a fantastic option instead of getting into the complications of imaging itself i love the idea of doing these smart scopes and they're just going to get better and better yeah you know and this is a star right here yeah it's 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 very easy to use um mm -hmm. i i'm i yeah i am a brand new astrophotographer um yeah. i've been doing it for like i don't know a couple months maybe that's and, good yeah because i think that uh, gen, that's what the audience wants to to know right and most of the people in my opinion that are requiring this are going to be in the same situation so it'd be great to get your perspective on it so we live here in the san fernando valley and uh, mm -hmm. we just took our dog across town to pierce college went out to their um, soccer fields yeah. and you know it's 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 a light polluted area like full stop within 10 minutes, I was starting to get my first images with this thing of the Orion Nebula. It walks you through everything that you need to do. It, it has tutorials every step of the way. Um, it's it, intuitive. It's very, very intuitive. Uh, especially with like, you know, mobile apps and technology these days. Um, yeah. Everyone's sort of conditioned to be able to use these apps pretty simply, and it sure. is no exception. It's yeah. not like imaging where you have a bunch of cables and a guide scope and just, uh, you know, back focus distances, which adapters do I need? It's such a change. And it, the results you got are pretty astonishing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was shocked, you know? I mean, I do some minimal editing in Lightroom, yeah. um, but and you, but it, it has great editing capabilities too. And then it's gonna have that Milky Way option, which is, yeah. it has that, which is cool. You can get that additional wide field. So for it's me, I fun. love wide field, so I think that's gonna be a really intriguing feature. Set up, you just set it on the ground, or do you set it on a table? How did you do that? At Pierce, we were just out in the soccer field, um, and okay. uh, I did br use my own tripod. You can attach this thing to any, any tripod. Uh, and I just like weighted it down a little bit so it could help it in the wind. Did you have any thoughts as far as, because some people online have discussed putting it in equatorial mode. Yeah, and it like, walks you through that too. If you yeah. want to put it in EQ mode, it has the, uh, it'll walk you through how to do that. When I first put, took this thing out, I was prepared to have to figure out, mm -hmm. you know, if it's aligning properly. It, yeah handled it all itself, like it, it was- You mean it was doing it on its own? Yeah, it was not, it, it, I, it required no intervention from me other than to input what I wanted it to look at. That's unbelievable. Yeah. And it has all the technology integrated into it. For the price that you pay as of this video, which I think is on sale for 550, it's gonna normally be 600 bucks. Yeah. Beyond just the, um, uh, again, back to the pursuit conversation, yeah. right? Like I'd say, because in astrophotography, like admittedly, it's an extremely high cost. It's a barrier for entry, right? Like, yeah. like seriously, like people can't get into this sometimes. And so, so this absolutely represents a, a way for people to get into astrophotography at a much, much lower uh, barrier for entry. It's, That's it's, a huge point yeah. that you mentioned because he's right about this. Because, you know, a lot of people would just get a sky tracker with it, you know, an existing SLR camera, digital SLR camera that they may have, you know? Yeah. This is gonna take care of that, yeah. you know. And and if you get into imaging, and, and Simon will attest to this, you gotta be ready to spend some money. What are your thoughts on the processing? You the there's a setting in the S30 Pro where you're um, for someone like me, I, I discovered it halfway through my first imaging session. Make sure you have that checked if you want to save your subframes. Then what you can do is um, go into the software, assemble your deep sky stacks with all the subframes that you've uh, compiled throughout right. your imaging session. Right. Um, and then there's also like an AI touch up that will help to denoise uh, in addition to um, the denoising that's already happening from the stacking process. How much time did you need to get at what you would consider a reasonably good image that somebody would go, wow, you know, I can see that. So the image you're looking at right now, um, yeah. I had, I, that was maybe 10 minutes. Uh, <laughs> of, yeah, it, it was like 10 minutes, if that. Yeah. Um, it, I, I was so blown away by what I was seeing right out the gate. I was fully expecting to have to like make adjustments and kind of come in and intervene on the thing and be like, okay, well, sort of getting it. But no, right away, it was like, it was doing it. It knew what it was doing. And, like, and, and people, if you're holding a tablet or a phone or yeah. iPad or whatever, yeah. they can see everything while you're there. Yep. Yeah. It's, you see the kind of first grainy image start coming and then like as the as they start stacking, it's just getting nicer and nicer looking. Yeah, you mentioned 10 minutes. I want to tell people just something briefly compared to visual 
uh, it takes, sometimes it can take people a few minutes, several minutes. First, you got to dark adapt your eye, for one thing. And you have to learn to observe. This is the thing that's important. People think like you can just go out and take a scope out. And they think you can't see anything, which is unfortunate because that's not true. Uh, and uh, not necessarily true. Um, because uh, if you're in a dark sky and you have dark adapted eyes and you're, you start to learn to do this, you can start to see a lot of things that you wouldn't think you could. So there's a learning curve. Whereas this, in just a few minutes, you're starting to really see things. You don't have to have a trained eye. It, it also comes with a solar filter too, and um, it shoots 4K video. So uh, yeah. the next day after uh, our, our, our nighttime imaging session, we went out to the hiking trail I mentioned, and um, we were mm -hmm. doing some terrestrial imaging as well as imaging the sun. Mm -hmm. The moon was out full view in the day, so we got both of those. And then um, uh, some, some terrestrial imaging too, which I'll share in a second here. I've never been more excited about imaging as I have now. You know, if you guys are really interested, visit our website at telescopes.net. Uh, but you know, Dustin here, talk to him. Get a, a person's perspective on it, a practical hands-on perspective. Uh, I think it's important, you know, when I do uh, telescope reviews, I like to hear like what beginners have to say. That information is valuable. I, again, I am a yeah. beginner. I am absolutely a beginner. Yeah. Like I have the photography and, and, and you know, cinematography background, but yeah. uh, this telescopes and imaging and astrophotography is a whole yeah. different world. So, and, and, you, and you guys can call us and talk to us. That's right. You know, we're accessible. Um, cool. Visit us at telescopes.net or you can call us toll free at 888-427-8766.